Guys, something amazing has happened. Follow me. That's right, guys. Mjolnir, Thor's hammer, showed up in my driveway. And as it turns out, I'm worthy. Wait a minute. I didn't get any cool armor. This is bullshit. Hey guys, welcome back. So, pardon the stupid intro, just felt like having some fun. Now, obviously this is not the real Mjolnir. Um, that'd be amazing if it was, sort of. Uh, it might lead to me having to fight some evil bad guys, and I don't know if I'm up to that. Sure give it a try though, if I had this thing. But anyway, this is 3D printed, um, actually fully 3D printed. Now, I actually modeled this myself, and then printed it, and then um, with my wife's help, we went and finished it up and she painted it and everything to make it look like it does. And I just cannot believe how amazing 3D printers are. Uh, my Robo 3D uh, did this like a champ, had no failed prints, not even any warping on the bottom here. And these were, um, I think, 14 or 15 hour prints each side. And then these were like six hours a piece, um, or maybe three hours, can't really remember. But that's still a long time to print. And it did it with zero hiccups. Um, Finished like a champ. And I also love the idea of being able to take something like this that was just an idea a couple weeks ago and so quickly take it through the process of creating it, printing it, finishing it, and then I have a real world object that I can hold and that looks this freaking cool. And I absolutely love the whole uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe and Thor is awesome. Iron Man's actually my favorite, but I am not going to be printing an Iron Man suit for myself yet. And also, I don't really need to continue the the whole fat trend with fat Iron Man. So I'll lose some weight and then we'll talk about that. So let's get in and take a closer look at this thing. Okay guys, well, here you have it. This is Thor's hammer. And as you can see, my wife did an amazing job painting this. I just can't get over how amazing it looks. And actually looking at it right now, you wouldn't even be able to tell really that it's 3D printed, which is just amazing if you ask me. And the amazing part is that these are actually two separate parts. Like it's split right down the middle here, but you can't even tell. Um, and I'll get into how we accomplish that a little bit later. You can see a little bit right there, but for the most part, it is completely smoothed out. And let's take a closer look at the handle. And then this is the top of it. And then I also printed this little stand for it so we can um, set it up like it is in the movie. So this was printed on my Robo 3D printer using um, PLA material. I printed the whole thing at 0.3 millimeter layer height, so nothing even too crazy there. And then through a process of sanding and painting, we were able to get it to look like this. And it is just glued together um, using a two-part epoxy. And once again, I will get into all those details um, a little bit later in the video. And then if you want to see these files for yourself and download them and have a go at making this, I put the um, files on Thingiverse, you imagine, ShapeTizer, PinShape, uh, Colts 3D, just about every 3D printing website I could find, so links are down in the description for those. And then after about a week's worth of printing, sanding, and painting, you could have your very own Thor's hammer just like this. And the kind of cool thing about this is it is very scalable. Um, you might lose some detail up here. But for the most part, you could scale this down and have a tiny Thor's hammer as well, and it would look very, very cool. So definitely check down in the description for some more information if you're interested about this. Well, there you guys have it. A fully 3D printed Thor's hammer. You know what the best thing about this is? Is you can make one for yourself if you have a 3D printer or know someone who does. Or you can order through Shapeways too. And it's actually a very, very simple print too. Um, it does take a long time. But there's nothing really that complex about it. It just prints in one, two, three, four, five parts. The body prints in two halves, and then the handle prints in three, so it'll fit just about any size of printer. Um, and it's optimized to print, so you should need very minimal supports to um, print this thing. And if you'd like to see the process of printing this and a little more information on how to paint it and put it together like this, then stick around. I'll have that um, 
in the second half of the video here. And then if you guys liked this type of thing, make sure you subscribe because I'll have a lot more videos like this coming up. And also if you're more interested in the actual design of this, um, I created it in Tinkercad and I will be posting a video on Friday um, that is the slowed down version of me creating this and um, I'll actually put some commentary over it so um, you can learn a little bit about my techniques and how I did this. So stick around if you want some more information on how to assemble this. And if not, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. I better go put this back outside because Thor's going to be looking for it and I don't need any holes in the wall. So. Okay guys, here we have all of the 3D printed parts, and I am freaking excited about this guys. So, basically what we have, um, well obviously we've got the two halves of the bigger portion of the hammer. Um, and as you can see, I opted for the hollowed one just to save on time and material, but um, in doing that I had to print it in this orientation, like there is the bottom of it which worked pretty well actually there was just um, a lot of cleanup I had to do around here because you know a lot of these are overhangs and it's very hard to do support material for details like this so I definitely say that if you're if you have the time and can spare a little bit extra on the filament I definitely opt for the solid model and then print it this way because then it will get all these details nice and crisp you will probably need some support here just because that is a significant overhang um, but the rest of it should print perfectly well and that should bridge just fine. Um, and then the, the hammer will actually have some more weight up top so it'll seem a little more real as well. So, but do whatever you want there. Just know that if you print it in this orientation you will have to do a lot of cleanup. And for that cleanup I just used um, a box cutter and I came in here and just started picking out all of the um, droopy areas and just manually cleaning it all up. So it took quite a bit of time but I think it turned out pretty well. And then this is the other half of that as well. And then here we have the three different parts of the handle. And then um, these are the pins to hold everything together. So um, this is the bottom of the handle. Just take a pin, stick that right in there, then stick the middle on, then take the other pin, and there's the part that connects to the actual hammer. So there we have the full handle. Now how the body connects together, um, you can see there's a little slot for a pin there, and it goes like that, and then this one will get ready, and then as you can see there's a couple little notches on the side there. Those will slide in, and it'll actually be a decently tight fit, and then you can just close it like that, and there we have finished Thor's hammer. Okay guys, so this is a little bit different uh, camera orientation than you're used to seeing on my desk, but that is because this thing is too big to fit in my normal shots, and to me that's a good thing. So without further ado, kaboosh! Alright, so here we have the fully combined Thor's hammer, um, and now we sanded this, so I don't know how well you can see that, but the surface is completely smooth to the touch. I started with a really, really coarse sandpaper and just worked my way up and we ended on 400 grit sandpaper. So at that level we were able to smooth this out um, completely. And you can still see the lines and you can really feel it if you go in there, but for the most part it is smooth to the touch. And the reason that I made these parts the way I did, um, I made them so they just kind of fit together, they don't snap together like some of my other designs. 
Um, and the reason I did that is because I knew that I wanted this to look really good. And so when you just snap together parts, there's usually a little wiggle room and you can see a visible seam. And that's not what I wanted for this. So I opted for glue. And um, we use like a two-part epoxy from Gorilla Glue. Um, and again, I'll show that in a second. But basically our thought process behind this is that we would glue it together and then go over all the seams with glue and then just sand it down so it's flush and then we'll paint over that and hopefully it'll help hide the seam as much as possible. And then here is the handle. Um, and this is actually broken into three parts. There's a seam right there and a seam right there. And then it is attached on the inside. Okay, so what you're going to need to make this is um, obviously you're going to need a 3D printer and to print all the parts. Um, but then after that, we'll just go in order of things you're going to need. And now obviously you're going to need some pretty common things like paper towels. Um, I'll assume you have those at your home. So the first thing you'll want to do when you get the parts printed is to sand them. And in order to get a really nice sanding finish, I recommend using some really coarse sandpaper and then moving up to a really fine sandpaper. I think this is 100 grit. Um, this is somewhere like 220, I think. And this is 400. And once you get up to this level, the print will become com completely smooth to the touch, and that's what you want. Then next, what you're going to need to do is glue it together, glue all the pieces together. So um, for that, we got this Gorilla Glue. Um, it is a two-part epoxy, and you just squeeze it out. It's already proportioned, so you don't have to do any mixing or really anything like that. And then basically, you just put the pins in, um, like I showed previously and glue them together like that and just make sure that all of the edges are as flush together as you can possibly get them. And after they are all together take um, like a paintbrush or something that you don't care about that you can get glue on um, and just brush around all of the cracks to cover them up and that's like the, the seam lines where the parts come together because they will be visible. And so what we did is we just took this and kind of painted it on those seams and then um, after everything was dry and it was good to go, and my wife sanded those down to be flush before she moved on to painting it. And speaking of painting it, um, that is our next step. So first what she did was uh, she got this matte black. It's actually paint and primer, but um, the primer is the important part. And then she sprayed two coats of this on. I'll put a little video over here of her spraying that on. Just lightly spray it, really light coats. Um, and that will just basically give it a really nice dark color. Now you can use white primer if you want to, we just thought this would give it a really nice look and I think it turned out really well. So then after two coats of those and you've let them completely dry, um, move on to this. This is Krylon Hammered Metal um, Silver. Um, this stuff is really cool because like if you spray it on a really flat surface it kind of has this texture you can see up here and that's kind of what we we're going for. It looks a little different on the 3D print, but it was still just perfect for what we wanted it. And so I think she put um, three coats of this, letting it completely dry in between each coat. And if you notice any rough areas or anything like that, um, sand it once each coat has dried, just so you can keep it as smooth as possible. Okay, and then the next part is the painting. And for that, you're going to need some paint brushes. Um, my wife used a different range of paint brushes. For painting the handle, she used these guys right here, so they're tiny. Um, and this angled one helps her get to, into some of those angles on there. And then she, these she actually used for the wash, which I will talk about in a second. And then this is the brown she used for the handle. Um, and she just painted this on with a brush. She did three separate coats of this, letting it completely dry in between. And that's what gives it the nice kind of leathery look that we wanted. And now there are actually two final steps. The final, final step is just coating it with some sort of clear coat to protect it. Um, but just get like a Krylon spray clear coat then just spray the whole thing with it and you'll be good to go there and that'll keep the paint from chipping and prevent damage. If you would like to know more about this let me know and I'll post what I know which isn't a lot but if you want more information now just go to YouTube and look up um, how to paint miniatures and specifically a technique called a wash or a shade those words seem to be used interchangeably. Basically what it is, is these acrylic paints extremely watered down. Acrylic is water based so it mixes with water really well um, and what my wife did was just mix these two colors um, equal parts of these and then extremely watered it down so, so it was extremely runny. As you can just see this is where she used it and basically what a wash does because think about how liquid works. 
when you put liquid onto an area like this, it's going to seep into all the cracks. It's not going to sit on top of these details. Um, and that's kind of what you're banking on here. So you put the color, and it was just a little bit darker of a gray, and um, paint that on there generously with a big brush, and it will kind of just spread out into those, and then take a paper towel and just dab off the top of it. And that way you get a, a lot of nice shade, shading colors, back behind, and the top stays very um, bright and colorful. And that just makes it a lot more pleasing to our eye. Oh, and I actually forgot about one step before we move on to the clear coat. And as you can see, she's done a lot of details on here to make it look sort of rugged and used. How she did that was first she took the sandpaper after everything was painted, she took the sandpaper and just kind of roughed it up around the edges. And for that, you're just going to have to use your own artistic skill because that's something I couldn't even begin to imagine and she did a wonderful job on. So yeah, she just roughed it up a little bit and then she took those paper towels that I mentioned dabbing these parts off with um, and just kind of barely, barely touched it because um, there's not a lot of paint left on those paper towels. So it's almost like a dry brush. Um, and she just kind of went over some areas giving it a really really nice texture okay guys and then when you are done you should end up with something looking close to this um, and I know that was a lot of uh, stuff to take in and I don't really have a lot of footage showing this process and that's for a couple of reasons one we're still relatively new to this type of to these types of processes so it was a lot of experimentation, and a lot of that is hard to capture on film um, because, you know, you're trying things that are not working, you're trying different things. And the second part is that um, my wife is a lot more talented, obviously, than I am at this type of thing. So I had her do a lot of this, and she hasn't really been prepared to shoot things for YouTube and doesn't really want to be on camera a whole lot right now. So I can't show the whole process, but I am working on trying to understand this better so I can do a lot of these things and then I can show you how to do that in a more detailed way. But I will try to write out in the description um, the steps that I took to do this in a more clear way so you can reference that without having to come back to the video and skip through to try and find this part again. Um, and I'll try to be as detailed as possible in that. And I'll try to put that in the description down below and also on um, the Thingiverse page, you Imagine page, and all those different sites. Well, there you guys have it. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun making it, and my wife did such an amazing job, I can't even get over it. Then yeah, if you have not subscribed, I would really appreciate it, appreciate it if you do. And I'll have a lot more 3D printing projects like this coming up, and then I appreciate you guys watching. Remember, expect to see the um, CAD for this with commentary on Friday. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. It helps me out a lot. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Chaos Core Tech. And once you've done all that, check out some of these other videos I've made. Thanks for watching, guys.